Hi, this is Joe Hage. I lead the Medical Devices Group, which as of this recording has 315,000 members worldwide. And today I'm here for Life Science Television. We're at Life Science Northwest Innovation. This is North America's largest fully integrated life science exposition. And I have the honor of introducing my friend, Caitlin Cameron. She is the chairperson for Odonexus Medical Technologies. Hello, Caitlin. Thank you, Joe. So I know a great deal about your company because I'm a raving fan, let it be told. <laughs> Please tell our audience, what is your company about? Great, thank you. So Odonexus Medical Technologies is developing the world's first medical device for the accurate diagnosis of middle ear infections in children, also in adults. Middle ear infections, called otitis media, are the number one reason for antibiotics in kids. It's the number one reason for surgery in kids. Yet clinical studies show that doctors get it wrong 50% of the time, particularly in the key differentiation of antibiotic versus no antibiotic. Our device is designed very specifically using Doppler ultrasound, very, very safe, very well known, to differentiate not just the presence of infection in a middle ear infection, but also the type of infection so that the physician can clearly distinguish when and when not to prescribe an antibiotic. So let our audience understand, today's technology is the otoscope. The otoscope. And if I'm not mistaken, it's 80 years old. That's about right. So is yours a better otoscope? So the, the tool almost exclusively used to diagnose otitis media today is in fact the otoscope. It's a visual inspection of the outside of the eardrum or the tympanic membrane and an attempt to guess what is going on on the other side of that opaque membrane and determine whether or not there's fluid and if so, what type. That tool is indeed 80 years old and this doesn't replace the otoscope. The otoscope is still going to be around. What this tool does is fills an absolute gap. There is no technology that we can find anywhere in the world that can differentiate not just presence of infection, but type of infection. And that is what our tool does. So we actually are filling a huge gap and a huge need, which is why we have so much pull from the pediatricians and physicians who are our target market. So when you find out the type of middle ear infection, how does the patient benefit? So very specifically, there's, there's a variety of things. First of all, just knowing truly that there is an infection is a benefit in itself. But to be able to differentiate the types of infection, there are sort of four disease states that we're looking for. One is no infection, and I want to talk a little bit about sometimes there's good reasons to determine there's no infection. There's a thin watery effusion behind the tympanic membrane, which is to see a thin watery fluid on the other side of the eardrum that is indicative of a viral infection. A thick mucoid kind of honey-like effusion that is indicative of a bacterial infection. And a very, very thick, almost solid, like heavily chewed gum that is called glue ear. And it, by the time you get to glue ear, that's when the child needs surgery to have tubes because the body can no longer handle that infection So we check itself. your ear and you have one of four states. The mm -hmm. first is you're fine. Mm -hmm. And is there a problem there today? Yeah, there is indeed. And so actually to back up, the, the benefit obviously is being able to absolutely accurately determine when and when not to prescribe antibiotics. Okay. CDC says we prescribe antibiotics 85% of the time. 85%. And we should be prescribing in just about 15%. 15%. That's a huge gap. Yes, it and is. We, and we can differentiate and give them the tool they need to so decide. So for the benefit of those who don't know, so I gave my kid an antibiotic. Is there a problem? Yeah, so there's two, two issues. The first is that we're now really becoming to understand that providing an antibiotic too soon or when we shouldn't, particularly too soon, actually suppresses the child's immune system. And it actually prevents that child from developing the antibodies that are necessary for their own natural immune response to actually battle that bacteria and puts the child, unfortunately, at risk of repeat infections because okay. they never develop the antibody that's necessary to battle that bacteria. So by pr appropriately using and withholding when appropriate and using when necessary, we actually benefit the child and community in the large. All right. So... Um an antibiotic is one possible outcome. Yeah. What are the others? So back to the, your earlier question about what is the issue if there is in fact no infection. We're so focused on identifying otitis media, middle ear infections, particularly in children, and identifying when and when not to prescribe an antibiotic. We tend to forget that there's this whole huge other population where it's very important to differentiate whether there is a middle ear infection or whether there is another problem. As an example, I've spoken with a couple of people recently, one who was repeatedly misdiagnosed with middle ear infections for months and then turned out to have TMJ. Had that doctor had the proper tool, our tool, instantly would have known not a middle ear infection. 
Another woman that I spoke to just recently was for months misdiagnosed with middle ear infections, given unnecessary antibiotics, and only much later determined that it was not a middle ear infection, but throat cancer. Wow. And her throat cancer was allowed to progress for months. Had any one of the five doctors that she saw had our device, we believe that instantly they would have known it was not a middle ear infection and progressed her to the proper diagnosis and treatment. So if you don't mind, I don't mind telling the audience, I'm a potential investor. How many tests are we talking about a year? How big is this market? It's absolutely huge. Just looking at Otitis Media, 17.6 million doctor visits a year coded directly to Otitis Media just in the United States. And the United States is actually the smallest portion of this huge market. 150 million to 180 million ear checks a year just in the United States. 180 take that, million 180 ear million, checks. Take that times the world. All it's of which could be market. using your product. All of which could be using our product. So tell us, where are you in the... Uh, development and commercialization of your product. We are, that's great. We're late stage product development. We are going to be in market next year. So we are coming right down to the tail end of things. It's very exciting. Yeah. So I'm curious to know, what will the competitive response be? Mm -hmm. is, is an otoscope manufacturer going to see this as a threat? You know, I don't think so, and here is why. First of all, an otoscope is still going to be necessary in every one of those exam rooms. There's things that you use an otoscope for, for example, clearing earwax, that isn't going to change with our device. Our device fills a gap. There is, again, no technology out there. There is, uh, at, in the primary care level, there's an otoscope, and in the, at the uh, level of a specialist, you have a tympanometer, but even a tympanometer cannot differentiate type of infection. So. In all the technology that exists, there's nothing that can differentiate type of infection. So the conversations we've been having with the big medical device manufacturers, who in fact, manufacturers of otoscopes, of course, are one of the big, big ones we're talking to, they absolutely love it. They see it as a clear new opportunity and as a way to benefit the community. By the way, we've talked with insurance carriers as well. And often insurance carriers are not happy to have new tests because they have to pay for those new tests. They absolutely love this idea because they clearly understand the benefits of getting an accurate diagnosis by that very first caregiver that the child sees. They know that it can drive down antibiotic use and all of the negative consequences of overuse of antibiotics, as well as reduce surgeries and repeat doctor visits and so forth. So it improves patient out outcomes absolutely improves patient outcomes, but it also reduces health care costs. So we're kind of in a great place to have pull from the physicians who are our target market, as well as pull from the insurance carriers. That's well, fairly One of the unusual. things that excited me in your presentation, you said you already have a CPT code for this. Yes, absolutely. And yet you say that there's a gap, so that's an interesting... Yeah, it's actually, we can use an existing CPT code. That's so it's, nice. we, it's not actually our own CPT code, but from day one, the physicians will be able to bill for this test. Now, I've been following your company for years now, mm -hmm. and you told us a couple of new things in today's uh, presentation. Could you... Uh, share it with the audience. Sure, absolutely. We have just had an amazing spring. It is, it is just, I, I'm so lucky to have such a fantastic team that has just delivered over and over and over again. First off, we just completed our um, prototype that we call Sparrow 2, which unlike our Sparrow 1 prototype, has all of our own hardware, software, and technology. And we got that Sparrow 2 done. And we, it was so good that we decided, you know, if we just push a little bit harder and do a little bit more, we can make this prototype clinic ready. And so we did that. Great work by the team across the board. Did that, applied for, and have just received IRB approval to take this prototype into the clinic for clinical trials in children, which of course are the most protected patient class. The big part of that is, first of all, that puts us months ahead of our original schedule, but in that approval, we were designated non-significant risk. And that NSR designation, as people in life sciences world know, is huge, just absolutely huge, to be designated safe at this point in time. So we have these two huge milestones that we have delivered way, way ahead of schedule. And on top of that, we've just received some very significant honors. Um, we were selected, first of all, by the Angel Capital Association to be a part of their innovation showcase. Angel Capital Association is the National Association of Angel Investors. That's a big deal. Yeah. And they have an annual summit, and as part of that summit, they have this innovation showcase. Nomination, selection, 51 companies become part of this innovation showcase. At that innovation showcase, we were selected by all those 700 angels as the very best company there, which is huge. That's, that kind of endorsement is just huge. And then, just very recently, um, and very significantly, Odonexus was selected by Future in Review as a fire starter company, so Future in Review Fire. 
And they, their focus related to young companies like ours, they are looking for that technology that they believe will have the biggest impact in the this future. This is the one that excited me. Yeah, this is, this is a big deal. Looking for that biggest impact in the future. They only select 12 companies a year from nominations from all over the world. And we were one of those 12 selected. Previous selected companies include? Tesla was an early pick for them. The Economist magazine calls their technology conference the best technology conference in the world. It gets worldwide attention, and Odonexus will be there sharing our simple and elegant solution for Otitis Media. That's very exciting. And then lastly, you know, really there's big more. spring. There and still there's is more. more. We just received notification from the NIH that our fast track SBIR grant has been fully funded. Hey, that's fantastic. That's, that's just icing on the cake. Okay, so when's your next round? We're, well, on, on the heels of all of that wonderful accomplishment, that is the time to open a round. We actually have quite a bit of money in the bank, so we don't need to open now, but we are going to anyway, just because we really want to leverage all of these fantastic accomplishments. Well, put yeah. me on that list. <laughs> all right, thank I'll, you, I'll, Joe. Just in sum, <laughs> I'll tell you, this is my personal opinion. I'm excited about it because how large this market is, mm -hmm. how many tests are done, and, and pediatricians have told you, mm -hmm. put me on the list. Put me on the list. If I have to pay for this out of my own pocket, yep. this True. is absolutely better patient care. Uh -huh. We'll be able to do away with unnecessary antibiotics. You already have a CPT code, mm -hmm. and if you ask me, and nobody did, <laughs> there are a lot of strategic partners who need you to be part of their solution. Yeah. Nobody said that on camera, but <laughs> that's an exciting uh, yeah. uh, perspective exit for you. Yeah, thank you. Caitlin Appreciate Cameron that. Cameron is the chairperson of Odonexus Medical Technologies. I'm Joe Hage for Life Science Television. Thanks for watching.